The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hello, Cleaning Nation. Lindsay here with the wonderful Suzanne Bandick. We are so happy to be here today and do a special mindset podcast for you guys. Welcome, Suzanne. Thanks for doing this with me. Yahoo! Thanks, Lindsay. <laughs> yeah, today I wanted to dive into something that I think might be kind of like a next step, a, a more intermediate mindset situation. I don't want to call it a problem, but something I see in kind of mindset work, um, you will see people in just kind of any mindset field, especially with business where you don't want to talk too negatively about things. Like you want to frame everything in a positive light. And to me, sometimes it almost feels like we're kind of like, Oh, bad things never happen. Like we don't ever want to think about that or they're going to happen. And then there's this other more pragmatic approach where some people say, expect the worst to happen in your business and prepare for like the worst possible outcome. So just in case it happens, you're prepared for it. And to me, these are like two budding opposing ideas. And I wanted to just dig into it, Suzanne, and see what you think about it. Oh, I love these podcasts with you, Lindsay. I <laughs> never know what's going to come up. <laughs> Let's dig into it. Uh, two different things, actually. Negative thinking and preparing for the worst case scenario are actually two different animals. Ooh. Okay. So let's break them up. Let's do, because it's easiest, preparing for the worst case scenario first. Okay. Okay. Because let's face it, if we have something that bothers us, if we have something we're afraid will happen, mm -hmm. it's you, you can't just sweep it under the rug. Because you're going to have this great big lump under the rug and right. you're going to trip on it and you're going to know it's there and it's going to bother you. So you have to say, I have to think about what, what's the worst that could happen. Let's prepare for it. Let's decide it's okay or it's not okay. And then we can go to work on having the right mindset around it. Okay. Okay. All right. So Give me some examples, please, of when you would need to prepare, you think, for worst case scenario. Okay. I know we hit on this all the time, but it always gets asked, so I'm going there, is what happens as a cleaning business owner if I raise my prices and I lose, because I need to, to get to my 20% or more profit, and what if everyone dumps me? What if I lose all of my clients? That would be a worst case scenario. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lose everything. <laughs> and that really is a fear. Mm -hmm. And it's real. Let's face it. I, you and I, we deal with this all the time. It, it really is. It's real for everyone. So let's look at that. We know we need to raise prices because we need to be profitable. In some cases, we're even losing money on some of these clients. We might as well walk into their house, clean for them, and then hand them a $50 bill. Mm. Okay, that's the reality in some situations. So preparing for the worst sometimes is, huh, I might actually save money. I might actually make money. I might actually have more time. So realistically, probably you're not going to lose all of them, but mm. let's say you lost half of them. Okay. Okay. Let's say you lost half of your clients. You say that leaves me room for the right core value clients that will pay me what I deserve and what my business deserves. Okay. 
So it is worst case scenario, but we're trying to look at it. What will we do in that worst case scenario? Well, now I've got more time. Now I can go find real core value clients that, that value me. Mm. The others weren't valuing me. They weren't paying me enough. They're probably not a good core value match. Probably was costing me money to clean for them. And that may be a good thing. So what I've started to try and teach is if somebody says yes to a price increase, high five celebration time. And if they say no to a price increase, high five celebration time. Still, because now you've got room for the right client. Ooh, I like that. So you're totally flipping it around. And I mean, you're bringing that second half of what I talked about, the negative versus positive thinking. You're just supplementing, not supplementing, you're um, putting in the positive thinking right away, like no matter what happens. But putting yourself in that worst case scenario mentally and going through it and then how you're going to react to it, which is putting a positive spin on it. I feel like that might take a lot of practice for people too, because a lot of times I feel like when people go to that negative worst case scenario, they have a hard time digging themselves out of that. And what, what if you're not used to thinking that way, Suzanne, like what are some tips to help you flip the script, so to speak? Well, that's a great question, Lindsay, because for me, obviously, it comes pretty naturally. Yeah. <laughs> I live this stuff. I mean, I just <laughs> automatically flipped that all around and it's like, whoop, there you go. Here's the plus side. <laughs> okay. What I always suggest when you're thinking worst case scenario and you want to be prepared for it, which is a smart move, I'm going to declare that right now for everybody who's thinking it. Yes, be prepared. That means write it down. Mm. Write down this little monkey, this little thought that's in your head, that's running amok, that's starting to have this party, is going to stop you, is going to derail you from doing the very thing you need to do to have a successful business. Take that thought and say, ooh, that's interesting, little monkey. You're giving me this thought that I could lose all my clients. And then where do we go from there? We go like all of a sudden we're on the street. We we're nowhere to live, right? Like this Mm -hmm. is the worst case scenario. So you say, you know what? I can prepare for this because that's what we do. If it's going to be an end of the world disaster, what? You're stocking up on food, you're, you know, whatever, so that you can hole up in your house. So this is like, the worst case situation that you've, you're losing customers. Be prepared to have advertising ready or mm. a method ready to bring on the new customers. That's how you would prepare in that scenario. So to play devil's advocate, mm-hmm. you know, do you are you gonna are you gonna play Mike? <laughs> I don't. I'm gonna play Lindsay. I'm gonna, okay. <laughs> I don't know if I can I can be Mike. Okay. <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> what if, um, okay, do you believe, and this is kind of new age law of attraction thinking, I think you could go that route maybe, but there are people out there that say, well, if I think about bad things happening and imagine myself in that space, then I'm going to attract, like, I'm only going to have bad things happen to me. What would you say to that? I'd say there's a lot of truth in that. Ooh. Okay. So so (laughs) (laughs) there's definitely a lot of truth in that. So again, in a doomsday scenario, you would prepare for what you need to do. But if you walk around all the time thinking the world could end at any moment, Mm -hmm. you're not going to live a very happy life. True. So the same situation in your cleaning company, whatever it is that you're thinking worst case scenario, And in this situation, we're talking about clients and losing clients. Acknowledge it could happen. Prepare for it. Prepare for it by saying, if it happens, it will give me more time. What am I going to do with that time? I'm going to find new clients in that time. Oh, I have a success strategy if this happens. 
then then you move on to your thoughts. You don't keep thinking, I'm going to lose all my clients because now it's no longer a problem because you've prepared for it. Now you start thinking, what if they all say yes? Mm. What, what, what am I going to do with all the ones that do say yes? This is going to be fantastic. Now you start thinking all the good thoughts because you've prepared for the worst case. So you kind of almost have to like catch yourself when you kind of go down that, that rabbit hole and replace it with the better feeling thoughts. It sounds like. Absolutely. And for some people, it's going to take more practice than for others. If you're used to thinking of the worst, if you're used to going to the negative and all it is, all that is, is a habit. It's Mm. a way we tend to think about things that we've done it for a long, long time. And sometimes ancestrally, it's based on survival, right? It's a survival instinct there. I have to look out for myself. So it's catching the thought that doesn't serve you. So the thought that doesn't serve you is to live in fear and negativity. Mm Mm-hmm. And to replace it with a better thought. But wait a minute. There's no guarantee that will happen. Why don't I start thinking about the best case scenario? Or whatever thought. I encourage all our listeners to sit down and think of some positive things they can think about for themselves and their company. That would be a replacement thought to anything that comes up that's negative. Because it will be a practice to catch the negative, say, oh, that doesn't serve me. What's a better thought? Hey, amazing people. You may have noticed we don't sell a dadgum thing on this podcast. We don't allow ads. The only ask I can ever have of you guys is if you dig the show for you to spread the word and share so we can change as many lives as possible. Literally, it'll take you five seconds to give us a great review. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you as a listener and value the gift of your kind words. Now back to the show. And do you think there's always a better thought no matter what? Always, always throw anything at me. I guarantee (laughs) I will give you the better thought. There's always, there's a light and a dark. There's a plus and a minus. There's a sunrise and a sunset. There's there's life and there's death. There's always opposites. Mm. So it's choosing, choosing our focus. Where do we want to live? And it will change our outcome. And if a successful, profitable business for whatever reasons we have, if that's important, picture the successful, profitable business, and it will help make the little things that we need to do along the way. Well, they seem like big things now. It'll make them seem like little things because Mm. it's only a stepping stone to get where we need to go. Oh, that is so good, Suzanne. Yeah. I feel like a lot of clients we work with, especially elites uh, in our nine-week program, I feel like sometimes they can get a little stuck in the beginning there when they're going through the hard stuff. And, um, you know, we're being real here. It was one of our core values. It's, it's not our program. Isn't, I don't think it's easy at all. And I don't know what your opinion is, Suzanne, but I think if it was easy, everyone would do it. <laughs> Or it wouldn't exist, mm-hmm. you know, because no one would need the program because it's easy, right? Um, but I think a lot of the time that actually the tactical part of it is actually really easy because when you look at it on paper, it's like, yeah, it makes sense to raise my prices. But it's that that monkey mind, we call it sometimes, that overthinking that just puts the brakes on the whole process and we just get into like this tunnel of negative thinking. And I say we just generally out there, <laughs> not everybody, but it happens. Ab- absolutely. And everyone take note, it happens to me too. No way. Yeah. Why? Way. <laughs> and, and sometimes I have to catch myself. Mm. And sometimes I catch myself fairly quickly. And sometimes it's gone on for a little while. Mm. But it's it's usually pretty quick now. Mm. It's usually pretty quick, but, but, but that mindset stuff, I mean, that 
what you were talking with the program of it not always being easy. That's why Mike has hired two mindset coaches. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here. He knows he can give you all the systems and the procedures in the world. But if you keep dragging around the past story Mm -hmm. of what you did in the past, your unsuccess in the past or your success, and the things you can and can't do, if you're still dragging that anchor, it's really hard to make the changes that Mike suggests. Mm. So that's what we as the mindset coaches spend our entire day doing is we walk all our clients through like the process, Lindsay, that you and I are talking about right now. Mm. It's how do I get a different thought? Right, right. Let's, um, before we, before we go here, let's, let's, let's test another one. Let's get another example out there for Cleaning Nation, because I know there's always one more, (laughs) at least that I hear. And the one that um, I'm trying to think how to phrase it with with employees, with finding. I was going to say it must be with employees. With employees. Yeah. Like I, you know, worst case scenario is I can never find enough employees every time I find someone they quit and then I have to go back into cleaning. And my worst case scenario is I'm back scrubbing toilets again. Um, and I just keep getting in this same pattern of always having to do the cleaning. Like I can't get out of it. I'm in the worst case scenario. How would you help someone dig out of that, Suzanne? Okay. Now we're going to go into positive thinking. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to go to that realm. Okay. So I'm going to give everybody something that I have done in a previous podcast, but who knows? I don't even know what number that podcast is. So we're going to cover it again. And it's called a thinking wheel. Mm. Okay. Draw a circle. I'll just give it to you really quick and you can put anything into it. Draw yourself a circle like a clock. In the 12 o'clock position, you're going to put your thought. In the three o'clock position, you're going to put your feelings In the six o'clock position, you're going to put your action or non-action. And in the nine o'clock position, you're going to put your results. And your result is always going to feed back to the thought you were thinking. So, Lindsay, if you're thinking that employees, what's the use of hiring them? They're just going to quit. Mm -hmm. Sound familiar? Yep. Okay. (laughs) Our thought is, what's the use of hiring them? They're just going to quit. Make it like a clock. Make your way down to three o'clock. Mm-hmm. Your feeling on that is you're, you're like, why bother? Yeah, like helplessness, right? right? It, it's yeah. that feeling. So you're, you're helpless, you're hopeless. That's the feeling. Your action then is, I'm not even sure I want to bother putting an ad out. If you put the ad out, let's think about the energy that's going with that. You're thinking, Ooh. what's the use of doing this? Yuck. Lindsay's <laughs> face is already going all kinds of yucky, right? <laughs> Your result is, guess what? You're probably going to hire someone and they're going to leave. And then you're going to say, see, I told you so. Now, this is the power of our thoughts. Mm-hmm. Let's catch it. Let's say, look, I've got this result. I don't like that my employees keep leaving. I'm wasting my time cleaning, training them, and they're leaving. So think back. What's my thought? Well, I'm thinking this has been a, a, a repeating pattern. It's happened to me a couple of times already. It's probably going to happen again. So how can I change the thought? So you can't go to, they're all going to quit too. They're all going to stay and they're going to be happy and they're going to be perfect. I was just going to ask that. <laughs> Not even I could go there. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to say, hmm. Is it possible there are some good people out there who love to clean that want to stay? They're going to love me. They want continuity. They want to stay. They don't want to leave. Are there, is it possible there are people out there like that, Lindsay? Yeah, of course. Like, yeah, there must I, be somebody. <laughs> I think there's, there's all be of us, yeah. right? So insert whatever it is. There's nobody willing to work. Whatever the thought is find the way, well, there must be some people. The feeling or the emotion then becomes one of hope. Mm -hmm. Oh, possibility. Maybe, maybe hope, possibility feels a whole lot better than why bother. It does. It does. 
the hope and the possibility leads to the action of, huh, I wonder how I can stand as a lighthouse. I wonder how I can attract those right people to me. Hmm, maybe I should have a look at twigging my ad. Mm -hmm. So that I put something in there about, do you love to build a family? Do you love to stay long term? Do you love to do whatever it is that you want? Tuck that into your ad. Mm -hmm. Help it attract the right people. So now your action has been like, how do I get these people? You make the action. The result is you're probably going to find a whole lot more people who want to stay than want to quit. And boom, you've proved your new thought right. And that wasn't even that big of a leap either that you made there. It was just one little tweak that led to, I think they call it inspired action. One little different thought that led you to change your ad, you know, just, just that one little change can change the outcome for the whole thing. I love that. Right. So I think to tie the topic together, prepare for the worst, Mm -hmm. say, if this happens, if I lose my employees, I'll do this. If I lose all, a lot of clients, I'll do this. Just acknowledge that it could happen, find the good, and then go through the thought wheel so that negative thinking isn't creating a reality that you don't want. Ooh. Can't think of a better end to this episode, Suzanne, than that. You just tied that up in a nice, neat little bow. <laughs> well, So for this episode, if this is all ringing a bell for you and you need help getting out of that negative to negative loop (laughs) and you need not just the tactical part, which is so important. Don't get us wrong here. We love mics, (laughs) but there's a, there's the added part of the whole mindset behind it. Check us out at growmycleaningcompany.com. We have over 900, I think we're on like 970 some podcasts right now. We're we're coming up on a thousand folks. It's there's so much there for you to check out. More mindset, more tactical. Check it out and uh, check out our free training there too. And that's it for today, Cleaning Nation. We'll see you next time. And thank you, Suzanne. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Well, here we are, the end of the podcast, and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me, but like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing, share with a friend, share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431, 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts, and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now, 602-932-6431. Give me a text, say hey, can't wait to meet you.